welcome to all of you in this last lecture on glass processing. As you are well aware that now we are discussing module number 2 of our course processing of non-metals. In module number 2, we have already seen or we have already discussed two lectures. In lecture number 1, we have seen the glass, its structure, its history and the properties. And in lecture number 2, if you remember, we have seen that what are the basic processing steps in forming or manufacturing or processing or development of parts or products made up of glass. We have also seen two of the important types of glass which are made by the primary processing techniques. So, the two types of techniques we have seen, we have discussed that how a flat glass can be manufactured. We have seen the float glass technique, we have also seen the rolling or drawing in which a flat glass can be made. We have also seen how the glass filaments can be made. Also towards the end we have seen how the glass wool is made. So, basically in lecture number 2 our focus was on processing of glass, in lecture number 1 our focus was on the structure and properties of the glass. So, we have already covered the basic aspects of the glass and the basic aspects of the processing of glass. In today's lecture, our focus would primarily be on processing aspects in which today I will discuss about the melting furnaces which are used for melting the raw materials. If you remember in lecture number 2 of this particular module, I have told that if the time permits, we will have a brief overview of the types of furnaces which are used for melting the raw material in order to process the glass products. So, there are basically four types of furnaces which we would be seeing. Then we will carry forward our discussion towards the processing of glass in which we will cover at least two different types of processes which are used for forming the glass products. And finally, we will see the basic aspect of annealing that how annealing is done in order to reduce the induced stresses because of the processing steps or because of processing whatever stresses are induced in the product, how they are relieved. So, that is the last part of today's lecture and the last part of this module also that is the process of annealing. So, now we will start our discussion with revising or by seeing that what are the primary processing steps in case of pro forming of glass or processing of glass. On your screen you can see this is the diagram that we have already seen or this is a figure which was already covered or discussed in lecture number 2 of this particular module. But again we can revise that what are the various processing steps which are involved in making products out of glass. So, first of all we have the raw materials. Now, what are the various types of raw materials? how they are blended together or what are the various functions of the various raw materials or the constituents that go into the processing of glass because you know that there are colorants and there are the basic materials which we have already covered in lecture number 1 in which we have seen that the different types of raw materials or different forms of raw materials are combined together in order to process the glass product. So, we have already seen that what are the various types of raw materials and how the glass is named after the types of raw materials which have been used to process that glass. So, the raw materials are there, these particular raw materials are melted. Today, we will see that which are the various types of furnaces which are used for melting the raw materials. So, we have a set of raw materials, we have a definite proportion, a defined proportion of the various constituents which are combined together and finally, these are melted using different types of furnaces. Once the melt has been made or the glass melt is ready, it is formed to give the desired shape. If you remember lecture number 2, we have seen two methods of making the flat glass in which a ribbon of glass was made to float over the bath of a very low melting point alloy such as tin and then this is cooled under the controlled atmosphere, it is heated and cooled under the controlled atmosphere and a flat glass is manufactured. How that flat glass is better as compared to uh, we can say 
uh, different types of other glasses which are not of good quality because the glass that is coming out of this particular process is uniform in thickness and it has got very good surface finish and we need not do any finishing operation or grinding operation on this glass because of the very good surface finish that we achieve. So, that, that type of processes fall under the forming. We have also seen rolling or drawing in which the flat glass is rolled out between the two water cooled rollers, which these two processes were discussed in lecture number 2. Also, we have seen the glass can be formed into very fine filaments, so to the order of diameter of 2 micron. So, how those filaments can be formed through the orifice, the molten glass is made to be drawn out and depending upon the diameter of the orifice, the diameter of the glass filament is made. So, we have seen that to the tune of 2 micron, we can get the diameter of the glass filament. So, that is falling under the forming process. Initially, we have a raw material we are melting the raw material and after melting, we are forming the raw material. The raw material in this case is glass. So, we have the raw material, it is melted, we will see what are the types of furnaces used and finally, it is formed. For forming, we have already seen that there are number of processes, at least two or three processes we have seen in lecture number two. And today also we are going to see some of the processes which are used for forming the melt into the exact product or the final glass product which would be put to use or which is our final application. So, after melting we form the glass, after forming the annealing is done because the induced stresses of processing, because of processing there may be certain induced stresses in the final product and those stresses have to be relieved and therefore, we carry out the annealing process. So, technically these are the four important points to convert the glass raw material into the final product, but after the product has been made, it has to be inspected and tested, it has to undergo certain secondary processing steps and finally, it is ready for packaging, warehousing and shipping. So, all these three points we have seen. We have also seen that what are the major type of secondary operations which are done on glass in the previous lecture. But today our focus is on the first four steps only that is we have set of raw materials, the raw material is melted in different types of furnaces, then the molten glass is deformed or given a form using one or the other technique and finally, once we get the product it is annealed to reduce the induced stresses. Now, let us start our discussion about the furnaces or the step 2 of this diagram that what are the which are the different types of furnaces which are used to melt the raw material. Glass melting, in most cases glass is produced by melting raw materials at an elevated temperature which is very very clear that at a high temperature we will melt the glass. The melting of batch components takes place in furnaces. Now, batch component means that constituents, the batch of the constituent. Suppose, we want to make a particular type of a glass. So, we will make the or choose the constituents accordingly and this particular batch will go for melting at an elevated temperature. The selection of furnace depends upon the quantity and type of glass being produced. So, once we have the batch components ready that is the constituents that will go into the final product or the constituents that would form the raw material. Once that batch is ready, then it is melted and once it is melted, the molten glass is then formed using any of the techniques which we have already discussed or some of the techniques that we are going to discuss in today's lecture. So, the selection of the furnace depends upon the quantity and type of the glass being produced. Now, we have to see that how much glass we want to produce, what is the quantity and what is the type. So, depending upon the type and quantity of the glass which has to be produced, the particular type of furnace would be selected for that particular application. So, the criteria majorly is the quantity and the type of the glass. Now, most of the furnaces are made up of refractory blocks which can work at a temperature more than 1500 degree centigrade. So, the temperature of operation is generally more than 1500 degree centigrade for most of the furnaces. So, in order to uh, 
summarize the information about the melting of glass. As on your screen you can see, in most cases the glass is produced by melting raw materials at an elevated temperature. The melting of batch components takes place in furnaces and the selection of furnace depends upon the quantity and type of the glass being melted or produced and most of the furnaces are made up of refractory blocks which can work at a temperature at more than 1500 degrees centigrade. So, we can see that the melting is done at elevated temperature. Batch components means raw materials are constituents are clubbed together or they are mixed together and finally, they are rendered to the melting operation. And the melting or the type of furnace selection depends upon the type of the glass being melted and the volume of or the total weight of the glass being melted or in other words we can say the quantity of the glass being melted. And finally, the furnaces are usually made up of refractory blocks and the temperature can go up to 1500 degree can be more than 1500 degree centigrade. Now, with this background in which we have to melt the raw material using any of the furnace, there are different types of furnaces which are available with the engineers to choose from. Now, what are the various types of furnaces or which are the various types of furnaces which are available? On your screen you can see, there can be a unit melter, recuperative melter, electric melter and regenerative furnace. So, there are different types of melter and furnaces which are used for melting the raw materials. Once again we can see, you can keep these things in your mind that you, there can be a unit melter, there can be a regenerative melter, there can be a electric melter or there can be a recuperative melter. Now, briefly we will see that what are these four types of melting techniques or melting methods for melting the raw materials or what are the salient features of these melters. So, first one is the unit melter. A unit melter glass melting furnace that has no heat recovery device is termed as a unit melter. So, there is no heat recovery whereas, in other types of melters we will see that there is a heat recovery small in size and fired with 2 to 6 burners. So, the number of burners that are used for generating the heat may range from 2 to 16. It is intended for producing continuous glass. So, when we have to produce any of the technique where the continuous production of glass is required, there the unit melter is of best use. And the efficiency is low. Why? Because we are not able to recover. So, in case no heat recovery is there, the efficiency is lower. So, in order to revise what is there in a unit melter that we should keep in mind that it is used for continuous glass manufacturing, the efficiency is not very high as well as the heat recovery is also not there. It is small in size and the number of burners that are there may range from 2 to 16. So, this type of a furnace is a small in size furnace and used for continuous glass manufacturing. The B is the recuperative melter. A recuperative melter is a type of unit melter in addition with the recuperator. So, here we have a recuperator which is not there in case of a unit melter. Otherwise, it is similar to unit melter only. It is less energy efficient than regenerative furnace. So, energy efficiency will be more than the unit melter, but it is less than the regenerative melter that we are going to see in the subsequent slide. The furnace is used most often for textile fiberglass production. So, it has a specific application area, although it can be used for other areas also, but specifically it is used for textile fiberglass manufacturing. So, wherever the textile fiberglass has to be manufactured, we, we can choose recuperative melter. Electric melter. In this furnace, glass is melted by passing an electric current through the melt by means of electrodes. So, here the electrodes are placed and the current is used to generate the heat. So, glass is melted by passing an electric current through the melt by means of electrodes. The electrodes are usually rod or plate type and are typically made of molybdenum, tin oxide, platinum and graphite. So, we have seen in this particular slide that what are the various types of materials which can be used for making the electrodes which are going to heat the glass raw material in order to melt the raw material. So, the different types of electrode materials can be again you can see on your screen. It is molybdenum, tin oxide, platinum, 
or graphite. So these are the materials of the electrodes which are used in the electric melter for heating up by the flow of current. So the heating is done with the flow of electric current. In general, electric melting produces better quality glass and more homogeneous glass in certain cases. So, the quality of the glass that we will get in case of electric melter is much better as compared to the other types of melter. So, the quality of the glass is better and a more homogeneous glass is made using the electric melter. So, what are the salient features of the electric melter? The source of heat in this case is the flow of electric current which melts the raw materials to make the glass melt. Secondly, rod or plate type of electrodes are used. The material of the electrodes is molybdenum, molybdenum, oxide, platinum or graphite. Moreover, it produces a very good quality glass and a homogeneous glass. So, electric melter has got its own advantages as compared to the unit melter and the recuperative melter. Finally, we have the regenerative furnace. The two common types of regenerative furnaces are end port regenerative furnace and the side port regenerative furnace that we are going to see in the subsequent slides. So, in case of end port regenerative furnace, ports are located on the furnace back wall. End port, ports are at the end or at the furnace back wall. Thermal efficiency of end port furnaces are up to 10 percent higher than the side port furnaces. That side port furnaces, the ports are on the sides of the furnace and the efficiency of end port furnace or uh, you can say the uh, port is towards the back wall of the furnace, the efficiency is 10 percent higher than the side ports. Finally, commonly used for container and glassware industries. So, this regenerative end port regenerative type of furnace is used for containers, making of containers or where the glassware is being made. So, depending upon the position or the placement of the ports, the regenerative type of furnaces can be classified into two categories. Category number one is the regenerative type of furnace and port regenerative type of furnace and the second category is the side port regenerative type of furnace. So, on your screen you can see we have a side port regenerative furnace. In side port regenerative furnace, ports are located on the furnace side wall. In case of end port type of regenerative furnace, the ports were located at the back wall. Here the ports are located on the side wall. Side port furnaces are generally used for producing greater than 300 ton of glass per day. So, we can see the production rate of side port type of regenerative furnace is also given. The emissions are low, so it is environment friendly and commonly used for producing float and container glass. So, we have seen the float glass process in our previous lecture that is lecture number 2 in module 2. We have seen how a float float glass method is used to produce the flat glass. So, this type of a furnace side port type of regenerative furnace can be the melting source in case of the float glass type of process. So, we have seen that the glass is melted and there are different types of melters which are used. We have seen there is a unit melter which is small in size, then we have seen there is a recuperative type of melter, then the we have seen electric melter and finally, we have seen the regenerative type of furnace. So, all these four types of melters and furnaces can be used to melt the raw materials. Now, once we have the raw material, we have decided on the constitution constituents or the proportion of the constituents that will go into the raw material, that particular stage has been achieved. We will use that batch component into the furnace and the furnace then will be used depending upon the requirement that for which particular industry we are going to melt the glass or what has to be made finally out of that glass. We will choose the type of the melter or the furnace and where we will put our raw material. Now, the raw material would be melted. So, two stages we have seen that the formation or manipulation of the raw material and secondly the melting of the raw material by any of the melters. And finally, whatever we have got in the form of the molten glass has to be given a desired shape and that shape would dictate the use of that particular product. Suppose we want a flat glass, we can have a glass tubing, 
we can have a glass filament or fiber, we can have a glass wool. So, depending upon the final form of the glass that we want to achieve, we will now form the molten glass into that desired shape. So, for that we have a number of processing techniques which we are covering as a part of this particular module. If you remember in lecture number 2, we have seen methods to make flat glass, we have also seen methods to make glass filament and glass wool. So, today our focus is to see that what are the other processing techniques to generate different types of shapes. We will also see that there are some specific applications of glass or specific types of glasses which are used for very specific applications such as laminated glass. Then we can have toughened glass. So, this toughened and laminated glass we are going to cover today that what do we mean by a laminated glass? What do we mean by a toughened glass? All that we are going to see. If you remember in lecture number 2, we have seen patterned glass. We have also seen in which a type of a glass in which there was a wire which was there. So, different types of glasses are there. Maybe there are more than 500 different types or usage of glasses which we see in our day to day life. So, now we will focus on the processing of molten glass into the desired shape. We have already covered the raw materials in lecture number 1, we have covered the processing techniques in lecture number 2. Today we have seen the different types of melters which are used to melt the glass into the molten glass and now we will see some of the techniques which are used to produce the shapes of the glass products. Now, one of the important two techniques we have why C is written in this particular slide because A and B two important techniques we have covered in lecture number 2 in which we have seen how to make a flat glass and how to make a glass filament or a glass wool. So, two techniques we have already covered in lecture number 2. This is a third technique to give a shape or to form a shape of the molten glass. The molten glass we have got from any of the melters that we have already discussed earlier. So, in glass tubing, in this process, molten glass flows around a rotating hollow cone shaped or cylindrical mandrel. So, the mandrel is there as in case of metals whenever we have to make a tube, we use a mandrel. So, similarly in glass tubing also, we have to use a mandrel. So, in this process, the molten glass flows around a rotating hollow cone shaped or cylindrical mandrel. We will try to see this with the help of a diagram also, but let us see that they, what are the terms which will be used in the diagram. So, we have a rotating mandrel and the molten glass flows over the rotating mandrel. Air is supplied through the mandrel continuously to keep the glass tube from collapsing while the glass is drawn out by the set of rollers. So, when the glass is coming out and it is drawn out by the set of rollers, there is a tendency that the glass may join together or there are chances that the glass tube may collapse. So, in order to avoid this collapsing action, a continuous jet of air is passed through or through the mandrel, so that the glass does not collapse and the inner diameter is maintained. So, the temperature and the flow rate of the blown air determines the diameter and the thickness of the glass tube. Now, the air jet that is blown out, the temperature and the flow rate of the blown air, now this will have its influence or this will dictate two important features of the glass tube. Now, what are these two important features? The two important features of or the geometrical features of the glass tube. So, what are these features? These features are the diameter of the tube that we are going to get and the thickness of the glass tube wall. So, these are the two things which would be controlled by the temperature and the flow rate of the air that is flowing through the mandrel. So, now let us try to understand this particular process with the help of a diagram. On your screen you can see a simplest, simplistic or a very easy representation of the process. We have a molten glass, this particular color represents the molten glass, this is the mandrel and in this mandrel we have a air, air is being blown through this mandrel and this is the glass tube black color portion, this is the glass tube which is coming out, 
this is the cross section of the glass tube it is hollow from inside you can see it is hollow from inside and it has got a wall thickness and these are the supporting rollers that support the glass tube which is coming out of this container which contains the molten glass so we have seen in the previous slide that there is a mandrel this is the mandrel this is the molten glass or the raw material there is a air inlet which will be blowing out from here and it will dictate the diameter of the tube glass tube as well as the thickness of the hole or the thickness of the wall of the glass tube so here we can see this is a cross section of the glass tube which has been produced it is hollow from inside the final diameter outer and the inner diameter would be controlled specifically the inner diameter will be controlled by the rate at which the air is blown and secondly the thickness of the wall would be controlled by the blown air so there are supporting rollers also so this is one of the important techniques of making the tubes out of the molten glass now toughened or tempered glass now this is another category of the glass which is used for specific application we can see that we have the glass tubing we have seen flat glass we have also seen glass filaments or fibers we have seen glass wool now there is another category of glass that is toughened or tempered glass now why do we need to do the toughening or tempering of the glass we can see to avoid the fracture of glass local high compressive stresses are induced near the surfaces this is done by thermal toughening of the glass so what does this mean this mean that if we want to avoid the fracture of the glass we need to have compressive stresses at the surface and the tensile stresses in between so therefore you can see to avoid the fracture of the glass local high compressive stresses are induced near the surface this is done by thermal toughening of the glass now how thermal toughening is done that we can see the glass plate is heated at 2650 degree centigrade after which the outer surface is rapidly cooled by the air blast now we have seen that the outer surface of the glass plate the glass plate can be manufactured by any method now the glass plate is heated to 650 degree centigrade after which the outer surface is rapidly cooled how it is cooled it is cooled by the air blast so the air blast will cool the surface of the flat glass or the glass plate which has been heated up to 650 degrees centigrade due to which thin compressive layer is created at the outer surface and the center of the glass becomes the region of tensile stress so at the surface we will have the compressive stress is at the center we will have the tensile stress at the surface when we have a compressive stress the glass will be toughened now this type of glasses are used in glazed doors and making table tops and this process is termed as toughening or the safety glass this type of glass is called the toughened or the safety glass so very broadly or summary we can have of this particular process that we have a flat glass plate or sheet and this particular glass plate is heated to 650 degree centigrade at the surface and then it is cooled with the jet of or the air blast and once it is cooled this heating and cooling will make the compressive layer very thin compressive layer on the surface and inside there would be tensile stresses and this particular type of glass which has undergone this particular cycle of heating and cooling is called the toughened glass and it has applications in making glazed doors and table top the glass that we use on the table top that type of a glass can be made by subjecting it to a higher temperature and then cooling the surface by using the air blast then we have a laminated glass what is laminated glass it is made by bonding two or more pieces of the safety glass in the previous slide we have seen the toughened or safety glass how it is made it is subjected to a higher temperature and finally that higher temperature is brought down with the help of air blast at the surface we have the compressive stress in between the glass plate we have the tensile stress and the this type of glass is called the toughened or the safety glass so this type of safety glass is again used for making the laminated glass it is made by bonding two or more pieces of the safety glass 
the adhesive most commonly used for bonding is polyvinyl butyrol pvb depending upon the number of safety glass layers the strength of the glass may be increased or decreased now depending upon the number of layers in the laminate the strength of the particular glass can be either increased or it can be decreased the type of glass is used in automobile windshield where strength is one of the key issues so laminated glass is used in many of the automobiles as the windshields so we have seen that what is a toughened or safety glass we have also seen what is a laminated glass so laminated glass is nothing is there are different layers which are stacked up together now individual layers are made up of the safety glass and that depending upon the strength requirements we will decide upon the number of layers that we have to stack up in order to make a laminated glass and in between we use a adhesive and the type of adhesive is pvv as it is given on the screen then there are other type of specific glasses which are used for specific applications which are the tinted glass coated glass and self cleaning glass so we will very briefly see that what is the tinted glass or the coated glass and finally the self cleaning glass tinted glass tinted or heat absorbing glass may be referred to any glass that is formed by adding colorant or thin film coating of any material that reduces the transmission of light so basically we want to reduce the transmission of light through the glass and therefore it would be tinted with certain colorants or certain films so tinted or heat absorbing glass may be referred to glass that is formed by adding colorant if you remember in the very first lecture we have seen there there are different types of constituents that go into the raw material which is finally melted to make the glass so one of the important constituent was the colorant so in tinted glass we are adding the colorant why we are adding the colorant because we want to make a particular type of a glass so that the transmission of light is reduced through that particular glass so we can either use a colorant or a thin film coating of any material that reduces the transmission of light so the basic purpose of using the tinted glass is that it should not allow the transmission of light now depending upon the color and the film thickness the light transmission differs from 14 to 85% so that is the level of Uh, opacity to light that we can achieve by adding different types of colorants or by putting different types of thin films so depending upon the color and the film thickness the light transmission differs from 14 to 85% the most common use of tinted glass is in the automobile windows as most of us know we see that different types of films are used by people for objecting or for reducing the transmission of light through the windows so summarizing the use of the tinted glass the most common use of tinted glass is in the automobile windows so we have seen different types of films are put in the automobile windows to reflect the light or to reduce the transmission of the light from outside to inside so different categories of glasses are there then the last category is the coated glass we are going to cover whatever possible different categories of glasses so coated glass coated glass also known as reflective glass is manufactured by stacking of several layers of metal oxides or float or tint glasses by means of vacuum magnetism control and cathodic sputtering so we are not going to go into the detail of the processes mentioned here like the vacuum magnetism magnetism control or the cathodic sputtering but we are going to see focus on the application aspect of the coated glass that this is made by stacking several layers of the metal oxides on float or tint glasses so we have seen in the previous slide what are the tinted glasses in tinted glass we are putting a type of a colorant or a thin film is put so that the transmission of light is reduced and the efficiency may vary from 14% to 85% now if we use that type of a tint glass or different layers of tint glass are stacked together we can get a coated glass another important category of glass is a self cleaning glass in case of self cleaning glass we have a microscopic coating of titanium oxide what is the thickness the thickness is 15 microns on the outer surface of the glass so in self cleaning glass 
we have a microscopic coating of titanium oxide of the thickness of 15 micron and where is this coating this is on the outer surface of the glass why do we put this coating the photocatalytic effect of titanium oxide film so we have a titanium oxide film coating of the order of 15 micron on the outer side of the glass why we have put this thin film the photocatalytic effect of titanium oxide film absorbs ultraviolet light which breaks down or loosens an organic dirt on the surface so self cleaning means that it has to remove the dirt from the surface or the water droplets from the surface so how it cleans the dirt the photocatalytic effect of titanium oxide absorbs ultraviolet light and which breaks down or loosens any organic dirt on the surface so this is the automatic cleaning or self cleaning of the glass similarly as the film surface is hydrophilic in nature it causes rain water to spread evenly over the surface resulting in a uniform washing so it does not we can say allow the water to be there on the surface because the surface is hydrophilic in nature so the water is also cleaned as well as the dirt and dust is also cleaned from the surface of the glass now self cleaning glasses are largely used in buildings automobiles and other technical applications so we have seen that there are huge buildings which have a full outer covering of the glasses and it is very difficult to clean those glasses and in this type of scenario or this specific application self cleaning glass finds huge potential and application area now we can just revise or just look at this particular slide again that what are the basic mechanism of cleaning action in case of a self cleaning glass a self cleaning glass has a microscopic coating of titanium oxide the thickness of the coating is 15 micron on the outer surface of the glass the photovoltaic the photocatalytic effect of titanium oxide film absorbs ultraviolet light and which breaks down or loosens any organic dirt on the surface so organic dirt is cleaned because of this photocatalytic action of the titanium oxide which absorbs the ultraviolet light similarly because of the hydrophilic nature it causes rain water to spread evenly on the surface resulting in uniform washing of the outer surface of the self cleaning glass and therefore it finds application in big buildings automobiles and other specific applications now coming on to the last part of our lecture let us first see what we have covered today in today's lecture we have seen very briefly the different types of furnaces or melters which are used for melting of the raw materials in order to process the glass we have also seen how glass tubing can be made then we have seen what is a toughened glass we have seen what is a laminated glass and finally some categories of specific categories of glasses we have covered like the tinted glass the coated glass or the finally just now we have covered the self cleaning glass now once the raw material has been melted the molten glass is then formed into the desired shapes that we have already seen that what are different types of glasses which can be used and finally once the product is ready there are certain times induced stresses in the products so these stresses can be reduced or these thermal stresses can be reduced by the process of annealing and final stage is the glass annealing stage in case of processing of glasses so in annealing what is done glass products sometimes have induced residual stresses like metal products if cooling is not done at a sufficiently low rate so the amount or the type of stresses that are developed will depend specifically on the cooling rate and we have to manipulate the cooling rate in such a way so that we do not get any stresses in the final product but in many cases because of the processing steps involved because of the specific requirements of the product induced stresses are found in the final glass products so the glass products sometime have induced residual stresses as in the case of metals and these are there because the cooling is not done at a particular rate or the cooling is not done at a sufficiently low rate 
in order to release the internal stresses. Now, these internal stresses may later on lead to failure of the glass product or the failure may not take place may be within days or weeks it may take place after months also because of the internal stresses. So, in order to release the internal stresses, the temperature of the glass melt is held steady over a period of long period of time. So, we will see what is the annealing cycle and how annealing is done in case of glasses. But first of all, we should try to understand that we heat the glass to a particular level and then it is maintained there for a long period of time, finally cooled at a specific cooling rate. So, in order to release the internal stresses, the temperature of the glass melt is held steady over a long period of time. The above stated process is also known as annealing. So, this is what we are discussing specifically in case of glass products. Annealing removes thermal stresses from the glass caused by quenching process and hence increase the overall strength. So, we can see that because of quenching or quick cooling sometimes whatever stresses are developed these can be relieved by the annealing process and the strength of the final product can be improved. So, we have just seen that what is the annealing process in case of glasses. To now, our focus would be on the process description. On your screen, you can see that broadly there are four steps that are there in the glass annealing. Now, what are these four steps? We will cover these steps one by one. Now, step number one in annealing process, the glass is heated until the temperature reaches a stress relief point that is annealing temperature also known as the annealing point. So, first important point is to increase the temperature of the glass product to a particular level. Now, what is that level called? That level is called the annealing temperature or the annealing point and what is going to happen at that particular point is also clear. It is a stress relief point. Now, whatever stresses are present in the glass product would be relieved at that particular level. So, in annealing process, the glass product is heated until the temperature reaches the stress relief point that is annealing temperature. It is also called as the annealing point. So, once we have heated the or we have raised the temperature of the glass product to the annealing point or the stress relief point. We have to keep the product at that particular temperature for a prolonged period of time, which is mentioned in point number 2. The glass product is then allowed to remain at the annealing point for a specific period of time until the temperature is even throughout means that the total product has got the same temperature or we have different points within the product which are at the same temperature. So, two important steps are heating, the glass is heated until the temperature reaches the stress relief point and secondly we are maintaining the level at which we have raised the temperature. Third period, the soaking time or this holding time, we can also call this time as the holding time. The soaking time depends upon the size, thickness and type of glass. Now, this will depend because in the previous point we have seen that the temperature is even throughout. So, we have to maintain this particular condition that we have a uniform temperature throughout the product. So, if the size is very, very big, the time would certainly be more because it will take longer time to reach the same temperature at each and every place. So, the soaking time depends upon the size of the product. It will also depend upon the thickness and finally, that it will depend upon the type of the glass. So, it may depend upon the sectional thickness minimum or the maximum sectional thickness and it will depend on which type of glass we are doing the annealing process. So, we have raised the temperature to a particular point, the point is called the annealing point suppose, there are other names also for that point. Then we are maintaining that temperature and finally, the glass is cooled to a temperature below the strain point at a predetermined rate. So, this cooling is also predetermined, the rate at which the cooling will take place is also predetermined. So, we can try to understand this with the help of a very simple diagram on your screen. We have on y axis we have the temperature and on x axis we have the time. We can see when we start from a particular temperature, the temperature is increased linearly to a particular time and this is the soaking period. First one is the heating period in which 
the temperature of glass is increased and finally, it is kept at the same temperature for a long period of time that is called the soaking period and once the stresses have been relieved, finally, it would be cooled at a predetermined cooling rate. So, this is the general annealing curve for common glasses. So, for most of the glasses, this would be the type of curve which would be used. But certainly, if you see on y axis, we do not have any scale, there is no mention of the temperature. Now, depending upon the type of the glass, the size of the glass product or the sectional thickness of the glass product, the temperatures may vary. So, that temperature may vary, but the basic nature of the glass annealing curve would be same in which first the temperature would be re raised which is called the heating period, then it will be maintained for a particular specific time that is soaking period and finally, the cooling would take place. So, primarily the focus would be to reduce the stresses that are developed in the particular product because of the processing. If you remember in processing, we are melting the glass at a very high temperature and this molten glass is being formed into the desired shapes. The shape may be a flat glass, it can be a tubing, it can be a filament or it can be glass wool. So, at high temperature the processing is taking place and therefore, there are stresses in the final product and this particular product or the glass has to be annealed in order to reduce those stresses and this is the final process of getting a product out of glass and once we have made this product after being annealed, it will be tested and inspected. After testing and inspection, certain secondary operations would be conducted on this particular product and finally, it would be shipped. So, if you remember just to summarize the various stages or various steps in the processing of glass products, initially we have the raw materials. The raw materials are melted. After melting, the molten glass is formed into the desired shapes and once the forming has taken place, we get the final product. It is annealed in order to reduce the induced stresses and finally, we do the secondary operations and the glass is ready for or the glass product is ready for use. With this, we come to the end of module number 2 in which we have seen 3 lectures, lecture number 1 in which we have seen glass structure and its properties, in which we have seen what are the various types of glasses, what are the various constituents that go into the manufacturing of a glass product. In lecture number 2, we have seen the basic processing steps involved in making a glass product and we have seen two important types of glasses that are made that is the flat glass as well as we have seen the glass filaments or fiber and the glass wool that how these type of glasses, glass products are made. And in today's lecture, we have seen that what are the various types of furnaces or melters which are used to melt the raw materials and we have seen that how glass tubing is made. Also, we have seen what is the toughened glass, laminated glass coated glass, self cleaning glass and finally, we have seen that once the glass product is manufactured, how it uh, annealing process is done and the various terms that are associated with the annealing process. In our subsequent lecture, we would keep on focusing on the various processing techniques for other types of non-metals. Thank you.